Lovely stuff. How do you pronounce your name again? Levza. 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 Yeah. Levza. If I get that wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Life of Hair. My name is James Atkinson. Thank you for choosing to join into this week's episode. This video is part of my new series where I take everyday people and make over their hair. So Levza, hopefully I've got that correct, is our model today and she's traveled down from London for me to cut her hair. Now she's got a beautiful purple color on that she did herself. And to be honest, I mean, if people color their hair themselves, I really don't mind. I have no preconceived ideas about people coloring their own hair. Please, if it looks good, go for it. So we won't ask her about that because that's gonna be maybe for another day. If she ever wanted to change it, then she's welcome to come back and we'll do something different. But today we're gonna to focus solely on the haircut. So let's have a little chat about your haircutting experiences in the past and things that you've loved and the things that you hated and probably start with the things that you've not enjoyed before we worry about the things you have enjoyed. Sure, yeah, so the things that I don't like is when um, layers are cut inwards. Cool. I've had that quite a lot and I really hate it and even though I've asked people not to do it, they still layer it that way. Yes. Um, I think that's about it. That's the main problem I have with people cutting my hair. Or they say they don't know how to deal with thick hair and then they just mm. cut her out and mm. thin it. And mm. I don't like thinning. So you like a heavier a heavier Thank shape you. and you don't want it to look rounded. No, not like inward. Not inward. Like yes, kind of hair. out, coming out this way. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Lesva has got an enormous amount of hair. I don't know if you can get that on the screen. Maybe you can, but it is really, really thick. I haven't even touched it yet, but I can see how much hair is on her head. So obviously when we're thinking about, you know, the, the right kind of haircuts, um, we will want to reduce some of the bulk, but then obviously then we don't want to be thinning the hair because that's something that Lesbia doesn't like. So we are then left with uh, only a few options for haircuts, doesn't want it to come in. So we wouldn't want to put any kind of uniform layer onto the hair. We wouldn't want to do anything that takes the bulk away from in here and pushes the shape round. So for me, we are then left with kind of one of two options, basically. We can cut a very traditional square layer shape, which will look superb. Alternative to that, we can cut a concave layer shape where it's shorter, coming out to longer, leaving the weight in the bottom, stopping the roundedness, but also giving us uh, more height, more movement. So it, it, one of the things I'm briefly spoke on the phone but obviously we saved the consultation for you guys to be able to see it firsthand so one of the things that uh, you mentioned on the phone was mm -hmm. that the that the hair was feeling flat and you wanted a little bit more oomph in it yeah. and you tend to just let it dry naturally in this form or yeah, so this is i've just put some curl product in it and diffused it and that's how i usually style it great okay good so nice and easy on the styling front and that's always really important to find out we don't want to give this lady a haircut that is going to be very very difficult for her to manage on her own time because I think that's a, a common sin if you will of hairdressing is that we then do haircuts and give hairstyles that look fantastic today and well rubbish tomorrow <laughs> and I think that's something that I've had you've had even as a hairdresser you've probably have experienced that and um, so for me I think it's really really important that we kind of acknowledge the fact that that happens, that's a real thing, and you will be responsible for someone's hair feeling exactly like that. But it's okay, we can just hold our hands up and say, you know what, that's the way it goes. We shan't worry about it, but we need to be you know, mindful of going forward because mistakes are okay, providing we learn from them. So the, the starting point of what don't you like always gives us the best foundation because we can massively avoid that. We can now massively avoid hair that comes in here and becomes round. We can massively avoid thinning her hair so that she doesn't get something she doesn't want. So if we avoid those two things, we're gonna probably be around the right ballpark and she's gonna be happy. So start at that point of what don't you like and then work backwards to what you're going to be able to achieve. Remember, I started at what I don't like and then I was only left with two options because 99.9% .9 of all of you out there will probably only have six to nine haircuts that you do 95% of the time. So the, the truth of the matter is there isn't that many options. And of course you can narrow those options down very, very quickly and get to what is going to be the right result 
for the client on that day in a pretty succinct amount of time. So hopefully that's good and a good insight into how I've thought about this consultation. We've asked about lifestyle. We've asked about what she doesn't like. She's given us really clear and concise answers on both of those things. So I think feel very confident to say that probably a concave layer is going to be the way forward here. It's going to give more volume. It's not going to eat into the ends very much. So we're not going to get that rounded effect, but it's definitely going to give the hair more oomph and it's going to give it a whole different vibe without it feeling thinned out or uh, rounded into the bottom edge, which is the two things that we were going to avoid like the Blake. So how does that sound to you? More rumph and nice bit of uh, texture in the hair here, you know, giving this a bit of lift, but still retaining that fuller feeling through the bottom yeah, and not giving you that rounded shape. Mm -hmm. Okie dokes. Well, we'll give Les for hair a wash and then we'll come back in just a second. Back from the basins, all washed, ready to go. Now, a uh, classic scenario where when I was talking about partings, I put this parting in where it was when we came in. Uh, tend to flip-flop the hair around. It predominantly goes on to the left, but as I've always said in the videos prior, that if the hair is flip-flopped around, then go to a center parting, and then if it's flip-flopped, you will have some discrepancy on the opposite side of the parting, where the layers are fractionally shorter because of the travel, but the reality of that is that it means that, you know, we are gonna get a generally more balanced shape say the hair then gets flung in the opposite direction and you do something that's completely unbalanced to kind of accommodate a left-hand side parting, it could look like you've got some kind of weird ledge in the hair. So we'll just go in the middle and that'll make it happy days. Um, especially with the shape we're going to create, um, cutting a concave uh, shape, um, if the hair is flip-flopped around a lot and it's not dead in the centre, it can look quite strange. So we do need to think about that. Um, I was just, how do you say your name again? Levza. I was just talking to Levza when I was washing her hair. So the previous haircut she had was a lockdown haircut, cut by her mum following one of my tutorials. And it's absolutely brilliant. So her mum has got a career in hairdressing, no doubt. Uh, she said she was going to tell her when she sees her uh, that uh, I, I've sent my... 10 out of 10 good job recommendation it is honestly i've cross-checked it it is it is pretty much bang on so uh that is very good well done mum so um what we're going to do is as always take a section from the high point of the head down towards the back of the ear uh, and that way we're going to separate the hair from the thickest part at the back where there is absolutely a ton of hair in this particular instance. Well, there's a ton of hair all over. So once we've separated from front to back, we can just pop a clip in our back section to get it neatly out of the way, just like so. And then we'll do exactly the same on the opposite side, just like this. So from the high point of the head, and the easy way to find the high point of the head is make sure the head is in a neutral position place the comb on top of the head and at the point of which it touches down is the high point. Take it down towards the back of the ear, comb the hair forward, comb the hair backwards, pop another clip in it. So we're going to work in the front first, always my preference to start in the front. So sections wise what we're going to do is we're going to take a vertical section that runs all the way down the head about one centimetre wide roughly um, and that's going to be our starting point. Always start over the ear because what we're going to generally do is over direct the hair back towards this first line because the hair tends to get weaker um, around the front where the hairline drops back. We're better to retain weight and remove it later than we are to lose that weight around the front. And ultimately we can end up with two haircuts around the front as well if we're not careful. So this is our first section. So I'm right-handed and so if I want to cut from short to long, my body position needs to be with my back facing you, the audience. Because what I want to do is I want to try and cut from short to long, not from long to short. It's very, very challenging. And I know I've come across loads of hairdressers that have sort of said, now I can cut from long to short, don't worry, blah, blah, blah. Great, if you can do it, knock yourself out, 
but I think it's very, very difficult to get consistent and even tension on the hair and cut down. So we've got our first section there and we've cut a diagonal line of about 45 degrees, shortest point being in the middle, longest point being out towards the outer edge. We're going to take that section and then we're going to split that section down into two. So we're going to have a clear guide for our next section and we can now pull this hair back out of the way. I'm going to take a, a, a larger section. Now a section here is about two inches roughly and we're going to take this hair and we're going to over direct this hair back to the first section which is super easy to do. Just pick the hair up, pull it towards you, elevate the hair. Now remember we do want to change our body position so I'm going to move my body position I wanted you to see the over direction. This hair is now traveling back to the vertical hair from the very first section. And then we're gonna come round to the front again, changing our body position, elevate the hair up, finger angle 45 degrees. We can clearly see our guide. We're making sure the hair is over directed. I'm gonna cut a square line up towards the ceiling. Now we're not gonna point cut, you know why? I don't need to say why it was in the consultation. If you missed the consultation, part of this tutorial you might want to go back and see why we're not point cutting the hair. So I'm going to take the next section now. So I'm going to take that very first section that I cut and I'm just going to do exactly the same section that I just did. Split that first section into two because I want to over direct all of this hair back to the starting point. So I want to take all this hair back to the point at which I started at. So then an even over direction to one fixed point on the head and then we can do exactly the same thing on the opposite side. Again, body position in front of the, um, the, your, your client, angle your fingers up, over direct the hair back and eventually what will happen is, especially with the haircut we've currently got which is more shaped around the face which we'll emphasize again in a bit, we will have less hair to cut because of the over direction. So the hair gets longer in the opposite direction of which we push the hair. So if we push the hair back, it gets longer towards the face. And if we push the hair forward, it gets longer towards the back. We're actually doing uh, pushing the hair back, so it's getting longer towards the face. There is a lot of shape in there, which is from a haircut where it's all over directed forward. So it is longer in the back at the moment and there is less hair here. So we are trying to create volume and movement in this hair up here. And that is really, really super important when it comes to uh, putting layers into this particular technique. And then we can do is cross check our hair in the opposite direction. And we're looking for a line that runs from short to long, shorter at the crown, longer towards the face. But we do need to remember that there is already a haircut in place. We do need to remember that there is already a haircut in place that is shorter around the front. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up with a slightly uh, different result to what we would do normally because there is less hair in this front section because it was all pulled forward and cut on a square line. So we end up with a more square result than a short to long result because of the nature of the previous haircut. So if you don't know what the previous haircut was and then you pick it up and you're thinking it should have been short to long, then you can ultimately be confused by why that's happened and maybe even to retake your sections and cut it shorter. But you do need to be mindful of the haircut that was there previously. And if you think something's happened, try and work out why it happened and don't just go back in and say, well, it didn't work or whatever. In this particular instance, there is a haircut that is, I suppose, counterintuitive, but not exactly into the shape that I'm creating because I'm still putting layers into the hair. I'm still adding texture, movement and volume. So really simple now, what we do is we take a piece of hair, this side that we cut earlier, and we're gonna put it down over here. So now we've got that piece of hair down over here, we're gonna then take a section that runs over the top of that. So the section runs down over the section and over the ear in exactly the same way it did on the opposite side. We're then gonna take this section, elevate the hair up, towards the ceiling, like so. I'm now standing behind so that I can cut from short to long in the opposite direction. 
I can clearly see my guide in there. And once I can clearly see my guide, I'm happy to go. Same finger angle, 45 degrees, aiming up towards the ceiling, cutting a diagonal line. Super simple. Next section, split that previous section into two. Camera B. Take another section, well, as we did previously, approximately two and a half inches in front of the subdivided section we took for our guide. Elevate the hair up. Make sure that we are over directing the hair back to the guide. Finger angle the same, clear guide line, cut a square line. Lovely stuff. So this time we're going to take a little piece of our guide away, but we remember we want to over direct to the point at which we started. So we're going to pick up all the hair now. And this is the thing with over direction, you do end up picking up a lot of hair when you, when you cut it. And fortunately you've cut some of the previous sections, so you are handling less hair when it comes to actually cutting, but you do have to be able to handle quite a lot of hair in your fingers. And exactly what happened previously, we've only got a very small amount of hair to cut off because of the nature of the previous haircut. So we're going to take our section, opposite direction, just cross check, make sure that we've got exactly the same thing going on, which we have. We also need to cross check with our hair in the position at which we're going to, it's going to sit naturally because remember we cut a concave so we need to over direct the hair to check our shape because if we don't over direct the hair so that it all sits solid it can look like we've cut it with a jagged edge if you like, a, a, not the cleanest line, it needs to be in the position at which it's going to live and we're cutting a concave so it's really important that we check it in a concave. So now we can take the clips out of the back, just like so. Good stuff. So we're going to continue this shape now around the head. So we're going to take a piece of hair from our very, very first section that we cut that went over the ear, down, and then we're going to clip the hair that's in front of that section out of the way. Just like that. Same again on the opposite side. Great, so we've got two really nice even guides. Now what we're not going to do with the rest of the hair is over direct it to any one fixed point. The main reason for that is because the hair is incredibly thick. So we don't want to build up weight. We want to remove weight to make the hair lighter and sit with more volume. So what we're gonna do is take our section that we just took over the top of our previous section, the very, very first guide section we cut. So we've got a nice clear guideline. And then we're going to take a section that is approximately one and a half centimeters wide. Push all the hair back out of the way nice and neatly. And then pick up our section. And now in terms of body position, again, we want to be standing in front more or less of our client because we are right-handed. If you're left-handed, you would be doing the opposite. But if you are right-handed and you are cutting the right side of the client's head, your body position will be in front of the section and you'll be cutting a diagonal line up towards the ceiling. Again, if you're left-handed, the same, the reverse will be true. Take that first section that we just cut, split it into two,
take our section down again approximately one and a half centimeters wide pick up the hair and make sure you've got a nice clean and obvious guide to work from and we're going to just travel around the head like this so we're going to keep our sections coming straight out from the head shape finger angle at 45 degrees and what we're going to create throughout the shape is shorter layers on the top of the head and retain the length and the weight towards the perimeter it runs from the point of which we started all the way down towards the nape and then we'll split our previous section into two push the hair forward pick up this hair Set our finger angle, cut a diagonal line that travels up towards the ceiling. Some people might need to take this in two, and that's absolutely fine. I can hold it in one hand, so that's you know makes it a little easier. But if you need to take it in two, that's also not a problem. Split that section you've just cut into two, so that you've got a clear guide to travel forward with. And I'm going to retain my body position on the right hand side and I'm going to work my way around to the centre back because at the centre back I'll need to then swap sides because if I want to cut short to long I need to move to the opposite side so take a section down the back just like so elevate the hair straight up to the ceiling finger angle 45 degrees you know so many haircuts are just complete repetition you know, they don't need to be anything else, guys. I think that's something that we kind of overlook, you know. Even creative haircuts are hugely repetitive in the way that we approach them and in the way that we cut them and the way that, you know, they are created. And obviously there is an element of creative freedom within every haircut, but mostly what we're doing is a very, very repetitive thing. And I think the better we get at that repetitive thing, whatever it is, cutting layers, cutting graduation, bobs, whatever you're doing, the easier it is then to be creative. But, you know, this would be considered, you know, more interesting than a, a traditional square layer by cutting a concave into the hair. But for this concave layer to work and for it to look good, we need to follow the steps that we've taken on each and every section and just repeat ourselves over and over again so that we can get the whole thing working succinctly. So we make sure our haircuts are balanced and even. Now I'm in the centre back now so I'm going to stop here and I'm going to travel around to the opposite side and I'm going to work my way back towards the centre. Now one thing that can happen here is that if these first sections weren't exactly the same when you get into the center back you will ultimately have two um, haircuts that are different length so this is where being super super diligent about the sections that you take is really really important actually there is one more to take in this center back so we're just going to make sure we are dead in the middle Let's just double check these things guys it's okay to you know think you've come to the center back especially when you've got so much hair to work with and you can so much hair you can barely see the scalp when you take a section so you know just be absolutely sure before you move on you know don't pretend like that it's all good when it's not you can see that's really lifting nicely so again we're going to come around to the opposite side now obviously remember we've taken a piece of hair from that front section and pulled it into the back section. We're then going to split that hair down, elevate the hair straight up. We should have a nice clear guideline to cut from. And there's only a tiny bit to take off from the previous section. So don't ignore it, definitely cut it off. Split that section into two, push that hair forward and then work your way 
back. Elevate the hair straight up, just like so. Finger angle 45 degrees, clear guideline. Cut your section. Split the section into two. Now, I'm, what I'm gonna do with the next section is I'm gonna show you what you would do if your fingers weren't long enough to hold the whole section in one go. So we pick up our section, we then cut a line through our section, we drop down the bottom, put it here, and then we pick up top of our section, make sure we can see our guide, work our way down, split that section into two, and then pick up the bottom of our section and make sure that there's nothing to take off. Now because of the finger angle that we're cutting at, it's probably very little to take off at this point, but it just makes your life a little bit easier. Again, split that section into two, push the hair forward, pull this section back. Now we're coming round into the centre back now. So this is crunch time guys, to see if we've done exactly the same thing on both sides. This is a bit like when you cut a one length and then you check both sides and you see if you've done the same thing on both sides. This is the layering equivalent. So we're going to nearly there, we've got one more section to do. That is through the whole centre back. Split that section we've just cut. Elevate the hair straight up, and Bob's your uncle. Just the dust to take off. So that takes practice, guys. That doesn't happen overnight, obviously. And you need to be diligent about how many sections you took and the width of your sections. I automatically then take the same size sections on both sides. But you do need to work at that. It won't happen like that every single time. And the way that you pull the hair out from the head you need to make sure that it's traveling out from the head at 90 degrees. Each section is traveling out at 90 degrees to the center back. And then you've done exactly the same thing on the opposite side. Now to cross check a concave layer when the hair is um, this thick or uh, certainly when you're working around the head shape is very, very tricky. So we're gonna take a horizontal section just like so that we split down the center back. So we're gonna have like a little triangle of hair or a big triangle of hair in this instance. Pick the hair up. Push the hair forward. Make sure that it's in the position at which the finger angle should be. And there's just a tiny little bit of hair to remove there. Do exactly the same on the opposite side. So it's at this point guys, you really wanna assess did the, the, the layering pattern that you created work? Is it working for you know, what your client needs? Is it lifting the hair? Is it adding oomph? Yes, it's doing all of those things. I can see this hair is lifting off the scalp and it's still wet. So that's really working in terms of shape. It's given more texture and more movement, but we haven't got the hair tucking inwards around the edges. We haven't got that. Um, shape that is created a rounded shape We've still got all the square length through the bottom so in terms of layer shape I think that's worked really nicely we're going to now go back through the haircut that her mum did we're going to do it slightly differently just to make it a little lighter because she's got such a lot of hair that the haircut that was done was the haircut on my channel where it's like a horizontal Vidal Sassoon shag haircut and the good thing about that haircut is that it's very bulletproof, but ultimately it does create a slightly heavier shape. So we're gonna do it in a slightly different way just to free up around the front there, just to keep that little bit of movement going on. I don't wanna take it too short because the other thing is it's curly wavy. So we don't want it to then look like two haircuts. So 
it's a really great haircut for curly wavy hair. That particular haircut can go on any texture. It can go on wavy, straight, curly, very, very curly. It all looks different on each and every hair type. Um, in the particular instance of this though, what you want to be always follows mindful of is when the hair is curlier, you either go for gold and you go for like a full shag with a fringe, or you do a longer, softer version that's not going to then look like she's got one haircut here and then the length. So that is something to bear in mind. So we're going to do it in a slightly different way to the way it was done previously, but it's going to be a slightly lighter way because the hair is extremely thick. And we're only going to focus our attentions really in the front of the hair at this point. So what we're going to do is take a vertical section down the head. And I think for me, you know, vertical section splitting the hair front to back when we're working commercially, you know, is a really, really nice, simple way of separating the hair front to back. And if more hairdressers separated their sections out, even a small amount, they'd definitely get better results. It's something that I kind of see a lot of people tackling whole heads in one go. And that is a very, very tricky thing to do indeed. So we're going to push the back back. And then we're going to work exclusively on the front here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a channel of hair that runs over the nose. So brush all the hair forward, comb all the hair forward, pick up the hair. Now instead of holding it horizontally like this, which is how it was cut previously, we're going to lift the hair up, elevate it out from the head at B cam. We're going to elevate it out from the head at 45 degrees, like so. And then we're going to cut a square line. So we're kind of cutting one way, and then we're cutting the other way, which ultimately We'll leave us a slight high point at about here, but it's only slight, so we won't worry about it too much. So we're going to have split that section into two. We're then going to come down to the parietal ridge, which is the ridge above the ear for anybody that's, that's not, not sure. sure. Parietal, parietal ridge, ridge is just there. there. We're, going we're going to, to over direct this, this hair. hair. They come into the center, elevate the hair straight up, same finger angle, making sure that this hair is traveling into the middle. And then we're gonna pick up B cam. Then we're gonna pick up the final part of this front section, pull it all up into the middle, making sure our over direction is coming right over the center of the head. And if we've over directed, we should have a lot less hair to cut at this point than we did to start with. So we're looking for less hair because in the direction of which we're pulling the hair, it's getting longer in the opposite direction. Cross check by picking up that section. You can do it really quickly on this one, holding it at the angle at which you wanted to create the shape. Don't elevate it straight up here because you'll wonder what the hell's happened. It all looks really jagged. That's what I was trying to describe earlier. Really make sure you're holding it at the angle of which you cut it at, and then it will look nice and clean. And so then we do exactly the same thing on this opposite side. Fundamentally, ladies and gents, that is this haircut done because we're not going to texturize because we don't like texturizing, don't like that look. I personally don't like that look, so it was amen uh, when that was said to me because I wouldn't recommend texturizing this kind of hair anyway. You can make it look bigger, you can make it expand and swell, and you can make it look really, really frizzy. So my advice, don't thin or texturize curly hair. I know there are techniques out there that do both, but unless you want the hair to be bigger, then don't do it. Don't think it's gonna make the hair slimmer, because it's not. It's just gonna make the hair swell out because all the short hairs you create are like scaffolding for the longer hairs and the hair gets bigger and more puffy. So then the client can then spend the rest of their days trying to control their hair, and it's gonna drive them around the bend. So hopefully that helps you understand the relationship between creating volume you know, the hair expanding out and texturizing, especially on curly or thick 
what I like to describe as spongy. It's probably not the best and sexiest name for it, but hair that when you squeeze it and you need to let go, you can feel it bounce back instantly. Hair like that, avoid texturizing scissors, thinning shears, razors, unless you're going for big, big hair that can be difficult to control in the frizz stakes. I mean, for me, guys, one of the things about hair textures like this, this is probably on the scale of most challenging. It's right at the top end. So if you struggle with hair like this, if you find hair like this difficult, then don't beat yourself up over it because the reality of hair textures like this, and you will have had some seriously wonky haircuts in the past, I'm sure, or experiences of having your hair cut where, you know, people have not necessarily been able to cope with the texture, um, you know, it does take time and it's a slow process. You can't rush this type of hair. So if you get a client in your column, you get to do their hair, you know, the first time and you feel like you haven't got enough time, then tell them it just takes a bit longer uh, to get their hair done because it just needs drying slower. It took nearly 40 minutes to blow dry that, even just diffusing it, even in the style we took, we just seen. Um, and obviously having that time is really, really important because ultimately, you want the client to come back and not go home and wash their hair because they hate the way you style it or it's frizzy or it's big or it's whatever. Um, so I'm just going to pop the gown off and then we'll have a little look, uh, spin round and uh, show you the back and see how that's come out. And then Great. Right, so we'll spin you around and we'll just show you the back. So we've got some lovely layers in there, which has created some really nice lift in the shape. We've got a beautiful cascading wave going through there and it's really beautiful hair, but it's really, really challenging guys. And it, you know, it's one of those hair types that can go quickly the wrong direction and you can create lots of frizz and lots of expansion and shapes that, you know, the clients doesn't want to wear. Um, and then when we see it from the front and we push it all forward, We've got that nice bit of shape around the face there, just that we created by using that 45 degree finger angle in the over direction into the center. And we've not got that kind of uh, rounded edge through the bottom here. We've managed to retain a lot of the weight and length through this bottom edge, but give more volume, more oomph, more texture through this top section without it being kind of too big and poofy. So um, thank you very much, guys, for joining me on this particular episode. If you've enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're new here for lots more content just like this. And I'll see you again in the next one.